let's take a look at a model of power and influence. Influence is the ability to affect the behavior of others in a particular direction, whereas power is the potential or capacity to influence. Leaders are influential only when they exercise power. A leader, therefore, must acquire power in order to influence others. The model shown here illustrates that the end results of a leader's influence, the outcomes, are a function of the tactics he or she uses. The influence tactics are, in turn, moderated or affected by the leader's traits, the leader's behaviors, and the situation. Looking at the right side of the model, there are three possible outcomes, commitment, compliance, and resistance. Commitment is the most successful outcome. The target of influence attempt is enthusiastic about carrying out the request and makes a full effort and is therefore fully engaged. Commitment is particularly important for complex, difficult tasks because these require full concentration and effort. If you're influencing a technician to upgrade your operating system software, you would need his or her commitment. Compliance means that the influence attempt is partially successful. The target person is apathetic, not overjoyed, about carrying out the request and makes only a modest effort. The influence agent has changed the person's behavior, but not his or her attitude. Compliance for routine tasks, such as wearing a hard hat on a construction site, is usually good enough. Resistance is an unsuccessful influence attempt. It includes making excuses for why the task cannot be carried out, procrastinating, and outright refusing to do the task. Going to the left side of the model, a leader's personality traits affect the outcome of influence tactics. An extroverted and warm leader who has charisma can more readily use the same influence tactics than a leader who is introverted and cold. The leader's behaviors also affect the outcome of influence tactics in a variety of ways. Influence tactics are often viewed from an ethical perspective. Following this perspective, the influence tactics described here are classified into three categories. Those that are essentially ethical and honest, those that are essentially neutral with respect to ethics and honesty, and those that are essentially manipulative and dishonest. The categorization presented here is far from absolute. Except for the extremes, most of the tactics could conceivably be placed in any of the three categories depending on how they're used. Used with tact, diplomacy, and good intent, these strategies can help you get others to join you in accomplishing a worthwhile objective. Because these influence tactics vary in complexity, they also vary with respect to how much time is required to develop them. A simple but effective way of influencing group members is leading by example or acting as a positive role model. The ideal approach is to be a do as I say and do manager, that is, one whose actions and words are consistent. Being respected facilitates leading by example because group members are more likely to follow the example of leaders that they respect. A major way in which a leader obtains respect is by being trusted. Leading by example is often interpreted to mean that the leader works long and hard and expects others to do the same. Rational persuasion is an important tactic for influencing people. It involves using logical arguments and factual evidence to convince another person that a proposal or a request is workable and likely to achieve a goal. Assertiveness combined with careful research is necessary to make rational persuasion an effective tactic. Leaders who emphasize the rational decision-making model favor rational persuasion. Storytelling has become accepted also as an effective method for most leaders when attempting to influence workers. A strongly effective way of influencing another person is to explain what's in it for him or her if the individual honors your request. A personal appeal in the context of influence theory is the same as it is in everyday life. The agent acts the target to implement a request or support a proposal out of friendship. 
Becoming a subject matter expert on a topic of importance to the organization is an effective strategy for gaining influence. Managers who possess expert knowledge in relevant fields can get others to help them get work accomplished. Offering to exchange favors if another person will help you achieve a work goal is another standard influence tactic. By making an exchange, you're typically willing to reciprocate at a later date. To legitimate is to verify that an influence attempt is within your scope of authority. Making legitimate requests is an effective influence tactic because most workers are willing to comply with regulations. A leader is supposed to inspire others, so it follows that making an inspirational appeal is an important influence tactic. Consultation with others before making a decision is both a leadership style and an influence technique. People are usually more motivated to follow a request if they're involved in the decision-making process. At times, it's difficult to influence an individual or group by acting alone. A leader will then have to form coalitions or alliances with others to create the necessary clout. Influencing others by being a good team player is important in terms of a strategy for getting work accomplished. A leader might be a team player by doing such thing as pitching in during peak workload. A hands-on leader is one who gets directly involved in the details and processes of operations. Such a leader has expertise, is task-oriented, and leads by example. By getting directly involved in the group's work activity, the leader influences subordinates to hold certain beliefs and to follow certain procedures and processes. If implemented with good intent, they tend to be positive, but if implemented with the intent of disrupting another person, they tend to be negative. Ingratiation is persuasive in organizations because being liked is quite important to many people. When ingratiation takes the form of well-deserved flattery or compliments, it's a positive tactic. Yet, getting somebody else to like you can be considered a mildly manipulative influence tactic if you don't like the other person. Ingratiation is often directed upwards in the sense of a subordinate attempting to get a supervisor to like themselves. Ingratiation also works in downward directions when leaders attempt to get their subordinates to like them. Typical ingratiating techniques directed towards subordinates include lunch invitations, compliments, good work assignments, and feeding a subordinate's hobby, such as contributing to a rare stamp in an employee's collection. Leaders who ordinarily are quite the opposite of ingratiating will sometimes go out of their way to be humble and agreeable to fit an important purpose. Good-natured kidding is especially effective when a straightforward statement might be interpreted as harsh criticism. Joking or kidding can thus get the message across and lower the risk that the target will be angry with the influence agent. In upward appeal, the leader exerts influence on a team member by getting a person with more formal authority to do the influencing. Some managers view this as an ethical practice, yet it does contain an element of manipulation. A potentially effective influence tactic, as well as a method of conflict resolution, is to find a clever way to get the other person or group of people to join forces with you. In this sense, to co-opt is to win over opponents by making them part of your team or giving them a stake in the system. The tactics described here are less than forthright and ethical, yet they vary in intensity with respect to dishonesty. Machiavellians tend to initiate actions with others and control the interactions. Machiavellians regularly practice deception, bluffing, and other manipulative tactics. Some people who attempt to influence others are manipulative, but to a lesser extent than an outright Machiavellian. They gain the compliance of another person by making untrue statements or faking certain behaviors. Effective leaders regularly use motivational techniques such as rewards and mild punishments. Yet, when rewards become bribes for compliance and threats of punishment become severe, the target is subjected to undue pressure and coercion. 
Another subtle, manipulative tactic can be demeaning or insulting oneself to control the behavior of another person. In studying the most severe unethical influence and political tactics, it's important to recognize that the use of these influence approaches can bring about human suffering. Top-level leaders exert many of their influence attempts to bring about changes throughout the entire organization, often by attempting to overhaul the organizational culture. One such change would be attempting to influence a culture that was too collaborative to make decisions more quickly and independently or the reverse. A leader might do the following to bring about change as well as ensuring that a healthy corporate culture is maintained. Impose a new approach through executive edict. Establish a reward system that reinforces the culture. Foster understanding and conviction by helping people throughout the organization understand why the change is necessary. Hold people accountable for the changes in behavior that support the cultural shift. Select candidates for positions at all levels whose values mesh with the values of the desired culture. Sponsor new training and development programs that support the desired cultural values. A leader who exhibited all of these behaviors would qualify as a transformational leader because of all of the positive changes they bring. An important consideration in using influence tactics is the sequence or order in which they should be applied. In general, you should begin with the most positive or least abrasive tactic. If you do not want to gain the advantage you seek, proceed to a stronger tactic. If persuasion doesn't work, move on to exchanging favors. Use a more abrasive tactic such as upward appeal only as a last resort. The reason is that abrasive tactics trigger revenge and retaliation. A sensible approach is to begin with low cost, low risk tactics. If the outcome is important enough to the influence agent, he or she can then proceed to higher cost and higher risk influence tactics. The leader must also consider the direction of the influence attempt as a contingency factor. In general, the more position power an individual exerts over another, the less the need for being cautious in the use of influence tactics. When you have more power, there are likely to be fewer negative consequences from using more powerful tactics. Implicit leadership theories are personal assumptions about the traits and abilities that characterize an ideal organizational leader. These assumptions, both stated and unstated, develop through socialization and past experiences with leaders. The assumptions are stored in memory and activated when group members interact with a person in a leadership position. Our assumptions about leaders help us make sense of what takes place on the job. According to implicit leadership theory, as part of making assumptions and expectations of leader traits and behaviors, people develop leadership prototypes and anaprototypes. Prototypes are positive characteristics of a leader, whereas antiprototypes are the traits and behaviors that people do not want to see in a leader. The antiprototype of masculinity suggests that followers prefer a compassionate and relationship-oriented leader to a command and control leader. An implication of these data is that a leader who fits group members' prototypes is more likely to influence them than a leader who fits their antiprototype. A potential problem with leadership prototypes is that supervisors and subordinates might rate leaders favorably who fit those prototypes, even if the leader's performance is not so strong.